So for a good year and a half, I've been using an editing software known as Movie Studio 13 Platinum, and so far I've learned the ins and outs, and it's a pretty reliable program. If you're currently using something like iMovie or Windows Movie Maker, I think that Windows Studio Movie... I think that Movie Studio is a really good step up and a really good place to learn until you can go move on to a more advanced editing program, such as Final Cut Pro or even Premiere. Uh, unless you're a pleb and you shoney vagish. But as of now, I've been trying to shift myself from using Movie Studio Platinum to getting more used to Adobe Premiere, which in my eyes is a better program. And so I thought to myself, why not pass the knowledge I've learned over the years to all of you? In this tutorial, I'll be teaching the basics of how to use Movie Studio 13, and eventually along the way, I'll teach you how to use its various effects, tools, and make you a pro at using Movie Studio. By this point, you should have Movie Studio 13 already installed on your computer. It would ask you to open up, enter some of your contact information and other stuff. It would have you prompt you to install both Movie Studio and DVD Architect on there. You don't really need Architect unless you really want to uh, make uh, your movies onto compact uh, DVDs or CDs, but I I'm guessing by now you don't want to do that. You want to make direct YouTube video, so you don't need to install it. Just install basic Movie Studio 13 Platinum. So after that, you just go over here, you open whatever it's on your desktop, or you have it on your taskbar, or, you know, start, your start bar. You open up Movie Studio 13, and it's going to load up Movie Studio 13. Now, there was one problem I had before where Movie Studio 13 would kind of cancel any other programs, or when I had the internet on, it would cancel all, all the audio that was opened up. All you need to do is refresh that program, or whatever YouTube video you're watching, and the audio will resume. So once Movie Studio is done booting up, it will then load up this prompting screen. What you're going to do is you're going to hit new and this will create a new project file. A project file is uh, containing all the, your files and tools and stuff into one usable file that Movie Studio can interact with. You hit that and it will prompt you to uh, select uh, settings to match your uh, video. Now what this does is it sets the resolution and frame rate and these are presets that you can use if you already know the dimensions and resolution of your video footage. But we're not going to do that, and I'm going to show you in a little while what I mean. Now, if you name your project, we're just going to hit New Movie. So then you would hit OK. Now, one thing you want to do is that this uh, uh, allows you to set your, where your project files will be set. I usually just keep it in the base folder that Movie Studio creates in my documents. So here we go. Hit OK. And your project file is created. Now, I'm going to go... Uh, step by step of which uh, these everything uses so just keep with me and we'll be able to get through this now you're gonna see these two things right here simple and advanced now what these does is sets up the uh, complexity of your workspace simple basically you just have a simple workspace this is everything you need right here but once we hit on to advance it opens up a whole a new level of tools and other stuff that you can use and uh, expand it basically expands and lets you open up new advanced tools, that's basically what it did. But we're not gonna use any of this. We're gonna make a simple movie, so all you need right now is simple. I'm gonna go over advanced in a later tutorial. Here is your library or your project media. What this does is lets you browse through your files, presets, and other stuff that you've made, and allows you to select any imported audio or uh, uh, footage that you have and allows you to drag it and put it on your timeline. This is not your movie. Your timeline is where your movie will be made. You can. This is Project Media is where you have all your footage and stuff. Transitions are basically just preset transitions that you use, like for your footage. Video effects are are presets for any visual effects you want to use. They're already made. You can already put them in and done. Bam. Media generator is basically it generates different types of media effects, like checkerboard. Just makes a checkerboard onto your footage noise just a lot of these blurry stuff light flares are if you ever seen jj abrams or michael bay they're lens flares you have preset credit rolls and other stuff like that so right now we're going to add our media this is going to be where we import all our footage and audio and stuff so i'm just going to put in three basic uh footage put it right there and it puts up in our project media library now to put footage on your timeline you just click on your footage and drag it onto your timeline. Now this is what I'm talking about. You don't need to set your project files at the beginning. You can just skip through that because this will prompt up. What this will do, it will set your project video settings to match your footage. 
Now this is very important since you don't want to... If you have like different project settings to that of your footage, it will make the video all janky and messed up. It will match its resolution or frame rate. So just hit yes. And it fits the entire screen of our preview. Now the preview bar is basically showing us what in our what time in our timeline is showing up in the video. It allows us to show us and review what our video would look like. An important thing to see, uh, keep in mind is the preview quality. The higher you go, the more prettier and more uh, accurate your video will look like as the end results. But the thing about that is it will cause your video to lag the more high quality you go. Now right here is not really, it's lagging a little bit, not really that much, but it gets more and more when you apply more effects and stuff. So the farther you go down in quality, the more smooth your video will play. It won't play with any lag or any spikes like that. See, it's playing smooth. A smooth! No. Here are your basic functions. You can basically, uh, make functions for your preview. They're very basic. This one loops your playback if you click it on. Whenever the uh, end of your uh, footage comes out, it loops back to the start. This allows you to play from the start of your footage. You can hit that if you want to like review your footage or anything like that. This is basically stopping, stopping again. This allows you to go through the start or any to the end of your video. And this allows you to go frame by frame. Now this is very useful if you're experiencing lag and you have a lot of effects. It allows you to go very frame by frame without having to sit through it, rendering all that kind of stuff. So, I'm going to set this uh, preview quality just to good audio. So, we got that out of the way. So, you s you're now you're on your timeline. And you can drag your little cursor right here to go through different parts of your video. Or you can click to different spots in your video. Whatever you want. Now, these little doohickeys right here. You're probably wondering what this is. These are your layers. Now, what your layers are is they're... they're uh, there are two different types of layers. There's your video layer, which is where you're messing with the visual aspect of your video. You have your footage onto here. You can add text, different green screens, or different videos on top of each other. Now, your audio layer is basically the audio aspect of your movie. It allows you to put on different music, layer different sound effects, so you can have multiple sound effects going at the same time, all that kind of stuff. It also allows you to adjust the when you're with your audio settings, it allows you to adjust uh, if you want it to be loud or lower, it's right through here, through your bass. Now, you have these little doohickeys right here. You can basically, uh, this allows you to add, if you click here, it allows you to add visual effects right here. But we're not going to do that right now. This hides your footage or you can mute your audio. This right here, I don't really use it. You don't really you need to use that. You just need to use all of this. This is what you need. Now, onto your tools. When you have normal selected, it's basically your normal cursor. It allows you to move your footage around, allows you to select things, different tons of that. Got it. Now, what fade does is you usually when you usually watch your movies, you have these little fade to black things that fade from black to your footage. What you would do is you would go to the corners of your video. You would then bring this cursor out, and it adds a fade to your video. See, as we look at the preview, it's black, but it fades into our footage. That's pretty cool. If, but let's say I don't like how this fade is going. It's a little too slow. I want it to go fast. Now you would right click on where your fade is and you have these different options for different types of fades. So I'm going to click here and this basically makes the fade go faster. Aha! Uh -huh. But let's say I want it to go slower. You click on this one, it makes it go slower and it allows it to build in. There we go. You can also do this for your audio. So like you want audio to like fade in. You want you don't want it to start. You can fade in your audio and it just allows it to start. You can, it's it's pretty cool. Now another cool thing you can do with the fade tool is that you can fade two of your footages together. So they can fade into each other. And if you right click again, you have different it allows you more complex fade types. You can play around with this. I'm not really good go through this, but I'll just select that right there. Our footage goes right here, and it slowly fades into the other footage. Pretty cool, man. So we got that down. I'm gonna lay down more footage onto here. Hit normal. Bada bing, bada boom, bada bing. Now we're gonna move on to this little thing called auto ripple. Now auto ripple is a very uh, useful tool. 
basically what it does is that I'm clicking my footage right here, keep in mind to the footage on my right. Whatever I'm moving my footage and whatever is to the right of my footage that I have selected, it automatically moves that in unison. This is pretty good if you have multiple like audio and uh, uh, footage layers onto each other and you just want them to move indirectly. You don't want to move them individually, mess up your movie. It allows you to move them on unison. But let's say I want to move this, I'm like, eh, I don't like the position of here, I want to move it right here. But I can't do that because it's moving the right of my footage right here that I wanted to move it behind. So I would deselect auto ripple, turn it off, and I allow me to move the things individually without affecting the other footage. This is a very cool tool that allows you to move everything and allows you to basically control the order and structure of your video. It's very good. Don't have it on one setting, like it's situational for when you want to turn it off and turn it on. But it's always good to always manage it. So, we got that down. We have our footage onto here. We're good. Now, we want to add audio into here. So, we go to media. We get whatever music we want into here. So, I'm going to put some music under here. And I'm going to drag it onto my audio layer that when I want my music. Right here is music layer. Another thing you can do with these layers is that you can rename it to whatever you want. So I'll just say, instead of music, I just want to put song. This allows you to keep your stuff organized into what layer contains what. So what we have right here, we have our music on here, and it's playing our music. Yeah, we got that done. But let's say I don't want my foot, let's say my footage starts like this, and I don't want it to start like this. I want it to start right here. Now what would you do, you, still, you go to the selected point you want to start, and you hit trim start. Now this is what we will do. It trims the uh, footage to the left of my cursor and it cuts that out and instead starts with the, the point in which I uh, selected. So now my footage is where I want it to be. Uh, another thing I want to add with auto ripple, if you have trim start and you do like that, it won't move it to the left. You have to manually move it. With auto ripple on, hey, come on auto ripple on it automatically moves it to the point where your cursor was so let's go back there it's at the start of my videos at the start I trim start it's at the start if I don't have auto ripple on it just stays right there pretty cool so I have that I have my audio and my other stuff put right there so now let's say I wanted to put an extra video onto here so I would add media I would just Put this in here. Give it a little sec sometimes. Alright. Oh, yeah. Another thing is that if you just go to the corners right here, you see these blue little rectangles right here. You can like manually like trim your audio if you want. You can do that. Also, I forgot to go over this. I'm stupid. Trim end allows you to trim the end of your videos. So I have this. St I want my video to start right here. I want my video to end right here. Pretty simple. The split tool allows you, whatever your cursor right is here, it splits your footage into half. So you can like move this around and other stuff like that. If you want like separate footage and stuff. Alright, so we have our footage right here. And we want it to layer it on top of the other footage. Now as you can see right here, we have a text layer, which we could add in here, but let's say we want to add text later. We only have four layers. What you would do is you would click on where your layers are. You'll right click and insert video track. This does is adds another video track or video layer onto your thing. So we're gonna put this layer one. Or just call it, no, just call it video two, just consistency. Okay, so video two. So right here we made a new video track and we can overlay our other tr uh, footage onto our existing one. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind here is that you might have to create a new audio track for the audio. As you can see, the audios might overlap the uh, audio of the original footage. So let's just add another audio track. Here we go. Call this audio two. And if you want, we can just adjust the slide right here. There we go. I would put this onto here and I would click on if you hold up. If you put it right here, and if you automatically drag it, it moves both the audio and the video layer with it. If you click off it, it allows you to move them individually onto different layers. But as you can see, they both move me use them because they're still part of the same footage. So I'm going to put this onto here. Let's put it to the beginning right here. 
So you can right here, we have our video onto here, it's overlaid by here, but I can't see my other footage. If we muted this layer, we can see other footage. As you can see, it's layered on top of each other. It's overlaying each other, overlapping, if you will. Now, let's say I don't want it to overlap it. I just want it to appear on the top right. So I mute this. You can uh, either right click and hit video event FX, or you can hit right here, track FX, or you can just hit add FX, whatever you want. So I would just hit cancel. So it, this will pop up. And once this pops up, you will have these like your footage right here on your footage right here. This is important. Whatever you move right here, it will move the position of your footage in the preview menu. Now, let, now let's say I messed up. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to restart right there to its original position. I would right click and hit restore. You can right click. You can like flip horizontally. You can do all that stuff. You can just play around with it. Uh, one important thing to keep notice is to hit the show properties tab. Now it shows all your properties. You can enter uh, values you want for like the width and height. You can enter like specific values like I'll change the uh, width to a thousand. It trims it down a bit. There we go. Now the thing about this is that I usually keep maintain aspect ratio off so I can move it freely without it having to maintain its aspect ratio and just messing it up. So if I have maintain aspect ratio on like that, it like if I move it around like it, it like moves around and it messes like you see the edges right here, it just messes around. That's I don't want that, so hit restore. Maintain aspect ratio. No. Stretch I would still keep uh stretch the third frame on. So let's move this right down here. Nope. If you do this, it will zoom in on your picture. If you move it out, it will zoom out of your picture on your profile. There we go. Let's move it right there. Move it a bit to the right. Let's stretch this out a little bit like there. Okay. There you go. So you have that. As you can see, you push play. You have both. Oh, and it's lagging a bit. Video quality. I'll just put it to half. There we go. As you can see right here, go. it's overlaying each other. They're both playing at the same time. And they're both overlaid on top of each other. Pretty cool. So let's say. So I'm gonna go over adding visual f effects. No, I'm not gonna go do that. I'm gonna go over adding more audio and stuff. So let me uh, add another footage. I'm right here. So I've added this in, and I'm gonna find a specific point right here. Let me see. All right, right here. Let's see. I have this audio playing, and I don't like the uh, sound effect for that assault rifle. So what I would do is that I have I would just just for consistency's sake, I would add a new audio track, and I'm gonna call this sound effects. I would add in the sound effect I want. I'm going to choose the uh, Soul Ruffle sound from Halo 2 Anniversary. And I'm going to put that in to where I want it. There we go. And I'm just... This little doohickey, you can either do this two different ways to do it. You can uh, increase the gain of this little doohickey right here. And that will lower it without having to uh, uh, affect the entire track. Or you can lower it through here. But that's going to affect your entire audio track. It's going to affect each of your, uh, uh, the footage that's on that track. So I'm just going to keep that right there. I'm just going to move it right there. Let me play it, the original, for you. Now let's play the new one. There you go. It's pretty cool. So we have that down. Good. You can same thing applies if you want to trim and stuff for that. So, we got that finished. Now, let's add some text. There's uh, different ways you can do it. You can, uh, no wait, you can hit insert text media, or you can go to the media generous. This is usually I do. You can use titles and text. This is usually when you want like, uh, just like quick load titles, but I usually use legacy. It's easy to use, and it's very simple. So I'm going to put legacy onto here. So this is where you're going to be editing your text and typing out what you want. So I'm just going to say movie. Right here is where you change your font of your text. 
I'm just gonna pick a uh, blank golf like right there. Right here, ma actually, make sure when you're doing this. Uh, oh no, never mind. That's for tiles and text. You don't need that. So what would tiles and text do is that you would have to select your entire thing and then change your font in order to change it. But with this one, you can just change it freely. You got your different bowls and italics, aligning that's like stuff. Placement. Now placement allows you to place uh, whatever you want. If you have free form, it places the uh, text wherever you want. Also make sure your timelines that you have it where your text is. You can move it freely as you want, or you can select one of these presets to allow you to uh, center it and move it to different positions. So I'm gonna hit, uh, let me put it top center. There we go, top center. Properties. Now what tracking does is that uh, it scales out your uh, it spaces out your text. So you can have like little like cinematic stuff like there. You want to move it in, stretches it in, move it out, stretches it out. Scaling just like scales it out a bit. You know, effects, uh, draw outline. Basically what it says, it just draws the outlines. I'm going to just have a blue outline right there. And you can change the width of the outline. Feather like, it like adds like a bit of a fade to your outline. So if you move your outline right there, it adds like a little like fade thing right there. It's pretty cool. Draw shadow, basically self-explanatory. It draws out a sh uh, your text to have a little shadow over it. You can move the X position, which moves it left and right. You can move it the Y position, which moves it up and down. And you just have these like deformity, which like def basically what it's self-explanatory deforms your footage or whatever like that. You can like can change how it is and like that stuff. So there we go. So let's just say that we have our text right there. We have text already added. So. Uh, so I'm gonna ha just have my movie right here. We're gonna have it like that. We have everything right here. We have our movie done. We have our audio. We have everything. We have our layers all picked out. We got our music in. It's all good. It's good. It's going to be great. So we have everything done. Now you would hit. You would go to project, and you would hit make movie. Don't do upload to YouTube or straight to Facebook. It will look like absolute sh shite. You save it to your hard drive. Now you can pick different formats. You can pick uh, WNV. This like retains the most quality and stuff, but it has a bigger file size. While MP4, no, wait, no I got that backwards. MP4 allows you to uh, create a bigger uh, quality and file sizes. And usually you would use MP4 for uh, making your uh, uh, standards for a YouTube. Now I just hit advanced options and this is important. This allows you to like set different options and stuff for your movies and stuff. Now I have video game movies so I'm just gonna make a new template. Uh, I'm just gonna go to internet. 720 by right here, 30 frames. I'm gonna hit customize template. Now you don't need to change anything like this but mostly I would do is like if you really want to do it I would uh, hit 24 frames a second for your video since films are like that but if you're like making gaming videos or anything like that I would just go with 30 or 60. So this allows you to change uh, the uh, settings for your video afterwards. This is all you need to change if you, for uh, this time being. If you like that. So what I would do you is that this is your where uh, when you're browsing this is where you're going to your video will be exported as. So you have to make sure you know you have a folder selected out where you want to export this. I'm just going to put this to just a random folder WNV video. Alright, so that's where my file is going to be exported. This is the name of my video, so I'm just going to hit new movie like that. And then it will render out. And there you go. Your video will be rendering. Once it's done, it will then uh, prompt you to open it and you can review your movie and you can make any changes or mistakes afterwards. It will be done like that. So with that said and done, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and whatever help you need, you can ask me in the comments and I can clear up any issues or anything that I haven't sent this video. I'll be going over color grading in my next tutorial and I'll be going through visual effects step by step on what each one does for both visual and audio. This is Grumpy Elite and I'll be seeing you next time.